EV Revolution show is supported in part by Budget Safe Solar. If you are considering solar in most any part of North America, give my friends a call. They will take the time to listen to your specific situation and help you reach a decision about what's available to you and what makes the most sense. If you would like to join the growing solar industry, they'd like to speak with you. Go to www.budgetsafesolar.com to contact them. Well, hello there and welcome to another edition of the EV Revolution show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host, and thank you very much for taking the time to watch this review episode where I have a brand new Mercedes-Benz EQS 580 for Matic. I had to get that all that right. <laughs> Man, these uh, OEMs keep having all these long names and, and model names for them, but it's all good. I want to first thank Mercedes Canada for allowing me the use of this press vehicle for a few days. It's an absolutely stunning vehicle to drive and to get to know. So I'm going to give you all the lowdown that I have on it. Uh, so again, thanks very much for taking the time. Let me get right into the review. So this is an all new vehicle for Mercedes-Benz for 2022. The EQS is the first Mercedes to utilize a platform exclusively designed for EV models. It's the new purpose-built modular electric architecture. It's also the first fully electric vehicle from the company's EQ sub-brand available here in North America. We haven't got the EQ C, which first came out overseas, was supposed to come here, never did. I'm hearing it may come back here next year, we'll see. But until that happens, this is the first EQS, EQ sub-branded vehicle to hit North America, and it's their top-line fla flagship product, so why not? Now, as you can see by the exterior design, there's a lot of thought went into aerodynamics and being able to shape and sculpture the vehicle to flow through the air using as little energy as possible in this all electric offering. But you know, this is EQS and S is basically an electrified version of the Mercedes top end S class internal combustion vehicle sedan that's out there. And an S class is a true large sedan luxury, high end luxury version sedan. So Mercedes had to incorporate that S-Class sense of style and luxury into this all-electric platform, but still maintaining an aerodynamic benchmark for production vehicles. And they've been able to do that by hitting a drag coefficient of a low 0.20. And if you're an aerodynamics person, you'll know that that's a pretty low rating for a production vehicle. Uh, Mercedes-Benz spent a long time with this vehicle in various wind tunnel testing to get the lowest drag coefficient they could. You can see that this has a very streamlined design and aero optimized wheels. It's got a cooling air system. It's got body seals uh, that are nice and tight to uh, not inhibit wind, wheel spoilers, uh, and all these things help the car achieve greater ranges. Now, as I mentioned, the EQS is based on a new purpose-built modular electric platform, which is an electric vehicle from the ground up design. And that's what we love to see because there's so much you can get. You get all these attributes of an all electric vehicle based on that skateboard design. And they're all inherently offered such as in this EQS, such as a low center of gravity, increased structural um, and, uh, strength, instant power delivery and smooth linear acceleration, and very capable handling, even for a car of this size. And this is a vehicle that is a large luxury sedan class vehicle. Since this is a top end luxury vehicle that really is, an, as I said, an electrified version of the S Class Ice V, it should be spacious, smooth, and serene. To accomplish this, every EQS rides on an adaptive air suspension and rolls on rims that range in size between 19 and 21 inches. And the EQS exhibits a very quiet cabin and man, oh so smooth silk and ride quality. And I'll talk about that during my driving impressions. Now, one thing that's rare to the auto industry that Mercedes-Benz has in the EQS 580 or the EQS series is a standard rear axle steering system that can angle these rear wheels from up to 4.5 degrees. And you can get the optional upgrade to actually turn them 10 degrees, which this vehicle has. So this technology is intended to both make the 205.4 inch long sedan easier to maneuver in tight spots and it increases its stability at high speeds. After all, the Germans built this for high speed Autobahn, got to be able to do that. The turning circle on this vehicle is actually only 35.8 feet or 10.9 meters. 
Now the battery pack on this vehicle features a lithium ion a pack rated at 120 kilowatt hours, but the usable capacity is about 107.8. Now EPA rates the QS450 Plus, which is the baseline option for this vehicle, at 350 miles or 563 kilometers of range. This particular uh, variant of the uh, EQS 580 is rated at 340 miles or 547 kilometers. I'll tell you what my driving range is when I come when I talk about it a little bit later. But when I charged this to 100% uh, a couple days ago after I got the vehicle, it showed 670 kilometers. I've done a well over 100 kilometers and I'm still at about 530 or so. So this has humongous range and I'm totally impressed with that. Now, the 2022 EQS is available in three different trim levels and two different powertrains. So the EQS 450 Plus has a rear-wheel drive single motor, and my version here, the 580 4Matic, has all-wheel drive. So the power specs for this model, the 580, again, dual motor, all-wheel drive, 516 horsepower, 630 pound-feet of torque. I'll tell you, folks, this thing really moves for a car that's or just under 5,700 pounds, it goes. And a zero to 100 kilometers an hour in about 4.3 seconds. That's pretty fast for a car of this size and its class. It does have uh, four driving modes. It's got eco, comfort, sport, and an individual or a custom mode. I've been riding it, uh, driving it in comfort mode all the time, using the strongest recuperation setting that I could to get to try to get maximum range and just nice, enjoyable, comfortable uh, daily driving. I did put it in sport mode. It didn't really see much of a difference. Yeah, a little quicker acceleration from comfort. It lets you draw more power. You could see it in their power curve. But, um, and the handling didn't really seem to be stiffer. It probably was a little bit, but I didn't really notice it. This is a very capable car and a very luxurious car for driving around. So for charging, it supports CCS at charging ports right here. Just push on it or you can open it from the inside. And it has the J1772, of course, part of it. And then you pull out this little plug, which hangs. And there's your other connectors for CCS. This is a Type 2 charging port. So AC uh, charging supports up to 9.6 kilowatts, and you can charge this battery from 10 to 100% in about 11 hours and 15 minutes. You do need some time to charge this, but you can charge this from zero to 100 in that 12 hour window, which a lot of the off tier prices are based on within that 12 hour window or pretty close to it to maximize your cheap rates. So you'll have to check, but it's going to be really hard to get this vehicle down to zero with the amount of range that this thing has got, I'll tell you. Unless you're going on a road trip, then you're fast charging. It's a different story. Now, DC charging is rated at up to 200 kilowatts of peak. So the EQS can replenish about 70% of its battery or 10 to 80, which is kind of the normal specs now, uh, in about 31 minutes. So it's just on that 30 minute bubble and it, using the appropriate DC fast charger, if you could find one that supports greater than 200 kilowatts, that's what you should be able to get. And here's a picture of the charging curve for this. So it is pretty good. Again, with the range that this thing has to get even 20 to 80% back in 30 minutes is going to give you a lot of range, you know, in excess of 400 kilometers back at that 80 percentile mark, in my opinion, based on, on current, you know, summer, fall, springish kind of temperatures. In the winter, obviously, you could lose some, uh, some range loss, but with that capability, boy, that, that really makes this a really good long distance machine. Now this top model 580 is the most luxurious and the trim level delivers niceties such as heated and ventilated front and rear seats. You get a massage for both the front and rear passengers as well capabilities. It's got four zone automatic climate control, a heads up display and much, much more. Inside, the EQS is lined with beautiful, high-quality materials and outfitted, as I mentioned, with countless luxury amenities. Also has extensive ambient interior lighting, even headrest pillows. Now, I took them off because I don't really like them, but both for front and rear passengers and an executive rear seat package as well, which I believe this has. The latter includes an adjustable back seats, neck and shoulder heating, and an individual tablet to control the MBUX information system, which I'll we'll talk about in a sec. Now that is one of the most notable options with, uh, in this vehicle with what Mercedes calls the hyperscreen. It's a giant 56 inch long wall to wall panel of glass that stretches across the instrument panel and encompasses the entire infotainment system. While this digitized dashboard looks futuristic, 
The EQS does come standard with a more traditional dashboard, should you choose. Uh, this is the binnacle, the driver's binnacle. Lots of different information here, as you can see. Uh, let me close the door so I don't get that warning up. Uh, well, we'll get another one anyway, but I'll press OK to get rid of it. And um, we'll go from there. So there's there's is some different displays that you can choose here. You can, um, if I can remember how to do that, because these buttons are a little... There you go. You can go to Classic. You can go to Sport Mode, which gives you different looks and feels. You can go to uh, under Understated, which is just another way of saying kind of minimalistic displays if you want. Um, you can go, you can change colors, all kinds of stuff, hours and hours of playing around nav screen if you want it here. I find the nav in the middle to be really, really big, so I don't think I need another one here unless there's something you're doing in the middle. Um, but it does uh, it does show that, that you can show your assistance, like if you're how your lane keeping and that kind of stuff, where cars are if you want that, and there's different, um, different views of that that you can do, destinations, all that kind of stuff. And uh, then service, if there's anything that you need to service, tells you your tire pressure and uh, that when your next assist, uh, service assist is, what your max power that you've had, capability on your battery, still showing 100% capability and so on. So a lot of cool features here. I've been running this just in classic mode because that gives you your speed, but it gives, also gives you your percent of power. And while that's important is because in comfort mode, I'm very rarely doing more than using more than 20% of the power. Unless I kind of really hard excel, I might get up to 30%, but just by average driving, I'm utilizing lower than 20% of the power most of the time. And just in cruising along city driving, I'm averaging well below 20% of power. And with regenerative braking, of course, you're getting even less than 10, a lot less than 10. So I think that's why the range is so good on this, because as you can see, I've done 146 kilometers so far. I'm at 520, just 519 range, and I started with 670. So pretty close to bang on on this thing uh, as far as the range goes, and that's incredible. That's all been pretty well um, just city traffic with a, a little bit of uh, small country road. So here's the steering wheel. As I mentioned, these are all one-piece plastic so that, you know, again, um, it just, if to me, it's a little cheap, but hey, everybody's different. Uh, everything works. Some of these are sliding controls. They're touch sensitive to increase your speeds. Uh, here again, you've got your audio, your phones. Uh, this is to go up and down. You, uh, you can mute as well. Uh, different buttons, the home will take it to the home screen, of course, uh, and then leave that off. So it kind of rests on here. Uh, you've got your uh, turn signals and here's uh, uh, the wiper controls here at the end of the stock. So you can, uh, there are auto, a couple automatic settings and then um, different things uh, than your standard set. And then of course your um, gear selector is here, up and down, park, put a foot in the brake. Here's for your recuperation uh, less, here's your recuperation more. So I leave it right now, it's set for normal. If I press this one, I have to press the brake. Um, then it will, um, oh, it's not ready to drive because I didn't start it properly. So now we're going to be ready to drive. Here we go. Let's get that other thing going. So yes, I know that there's a thing, a door open. So let me just okay that. And if you um, press the coupe button, I think you have to be in drive. But anyway, trust me, it will, it will do that. Then we got your center display. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because there's a lot of stuff. It's a nice, big, beautiful display. Lots of touches. Your home buttons here where you'll get... These are all the apps that you have. Main ones are the EQ settings where you can go into... Look at the state of battery. 73%, 500 kilometers left. You can open your charging so uh, a socket. You can set your departure times and, and charging pause. So in this case, um, you would add times where you don't want it to charge versus you do want it to charge. It's kind of backwards. Next departure, you can set for vehicle uh, preconditioned as well for departure time. So let's say you want to depart at 7 in the morning, the temperature at 20 degrees in the vehicle. That's where you set all this up. Shows you your range here and different, uh, some controls for some of your, to help maximize or minimize the range or uh, change it a little bit, eco driving functions and what's activated and not. And then the consumption. Now, this thing only shows up to a three hour consumption and it's looking horrible right now because I've, I've really only had this thing parked. I only went to get it washed and then came back here. So I did a very short, uh, few kilometers trip and it's been sitting here with uh, pretty well running the whole time. So um, it's obviously not showing a lot in, in three hours would have been part of last night. If I look at, let's say the next, the last 90 minutes here, but I've seen this already down to 18, 18.1 18 or 181 uh, per kilometer, uh, that kind of stuff. So I think that that's pretty good for a car this size, probably get it even lower into the 17s with a good drive. I kind of wish this did a history, a complete history, or you could reset it, but it doesn't. So got to go from that. 
Um, what else can I show you that's popular? There are apps. Here's all your settings, tons of settings for different driving cameras, vehicle setting experiences, lighting. It's got tons of ambient lighting. You can really play around with that. Hey, Mercedes and info on the vehicle as well. Um, another one would be comfort controls. If you want to do your massaging, um, have your seats do different things, uh, ambient lighting, you can control that from here. Lots of things to play with for the front and the back. Phone connectivity has been brilliant. It uh, synced up my iPhone right away and I've actually taken a bunch of calls on it and it's been perfect, no drops. Everybody's heard me quite well. You can do radio, media, uh, plug in USB media, stream, uh, the different info as well. Your energy flow, which is cool. So right now I'm, I'm parked, but it shows you how the energy would flow. And then your comfort level again. Well, right now showing me the, oops, uh, that I'm at a, uh, where was that? That was back in uh, info. Shows me that I'm on a plus 1% uh, rise here, which is probably right because I'm on this curve here, uh, but I'm fairly level. Acceleration brake percentages while you're driving just shows you some of the energy flows and that you're in comfort mode. Um, that's basically about it. Smartphone integration, as I said. And then your climate controls would be here. You have all kinds of climate controls. Sync them. Uh, eco as well if you want to save energy where the uh, AAC is going to go or where the airflow is going to go. Also has air quality selection. So it has this energizing air control, which is like your HEPA filter, your HEPA system for Tesla. It's an option which will filter out particles and it tells you the status of what it's doing, the interior, the exterior, what it's at and what the interior is at for microparticles, nitrogen oxides and odors and that kind of stuff. I have to admit it worked. I uh, drove around and I went uh, not over, but right around a um, dead skunk in the road a couple of days ago, and I didn't smell it at all. So this thing does get the odors down. I'll have to tell you that much. And then you can gain, you can do some pre-entry climate controls if you want to, again, set the part times and that kind of stuff. A lot of different controls, uh, responsive, as you can see, graphics here, very nice. You can recenter it. This is the 3D look, so it kind of gives you a larger view, pinch the zoom, pinch the out, all that kind of stuff. Um, that, that you can do, which is pretty nice. Your phone integration, as I mentioned, is all there. This is a very nice display. Now there's also a passenger um, uh, system as well here, which I have to be sitting in that seat to activate, but all it does is mimic the middle one. It gives you some of the functionality from that middle one there and um, it lets you do things. Um, it has this fingerprint scanner that I mentioned see if I can figure out how to scroll down. So right here, you can find fingerprint. Now it hasn't, I haven't set it up, so it's not going to work, but there are some buttons here that you can do. You can change your driving modes. Uh, parking cameras as well is pretty cool. It's got a lot of different camera camera views. Now I have the uh, second door open there, so that's what you're seeing this, this obscurity, but uh, different views from the camera, if you want to see that, um, your front view, your rear view, um, uh, the, that side, it's telling me that that door is open. Uh, left side here. So this is the virtual kind of 3D. You've got an auto camera system, again, a 3D parking sensors, and then you can rec g save this GPS as well uh, for whatever reason. Maybe if something happened and you want to save that by looking at it. But so that's are some of the things you can get from here. Your power for your radio and your mute button, and then again, volume controls. Now, one thing I did find is I like to rest my arm over here. Sometimes I'm, I'm knocking these controls and it's coming up with stuff, but I'm not meaning to. So that's another little pet peeve, but nothing big. Again, memory uh, uh, settings for the passenger in their screen, they can use the heater, um, they can use the massage controls, more, more seat adjustment, all that kind of stuff. Really nicely appointed uh, area here. Middle, you have your standard, um, you know, stuff for LED lights. You've got some ambient lighting, which may or may not be coming out on camera. Nice lighting system. Here's where the sunshade comes in. So if I open this up, um, it turns, opens up the cabin, as you can see, and it closes it from the middle. So hopefully that's coming out. And everything uh, goes into that medium, that middle uh, cross beam there, which is pretty cool. So you've got a nice big glass out back and a very spacious uh, rear interior. Lots of room. I'm going to go back there and show you that in a sec, but just a wonderfully outfitted interior in this Mercedes. Well, as you know, I always try to see how I can fit my larger than normal frame into back seats of vehicles. There's no exception. It should be quite easy. So let me see here. Get into this luxurious environment. Yep, a little bit of a duck down here, but uh, once you're in, oh, very comfortable back here. Tons of leg room. I have the seat set where I would have it. Uh, so you got lots of room to go back. Good height, about a fistful of height here. Uh, maybe half a fist uh, with the bulge after the uh, sunroof, but I believe these seats can get lowered down. I think they're probably quite high. I haven't played around with these seats, so there is some adjustability. 
But again, it's all about comfort, and everybody who's been in this vehicle that I've been driving them around has just said how wonderful of a comfortable experience it is in this vehicle. So, really nice. Okay, if we look at the rear, so as I mentioned, when you saw me get in, a nicely equipped rear, you've got these hard map um, magazine holders or whatever. These are, by the way, adjustable headrests in the front. There's all kinds of things that are adjustable. It'll take me an hour to show you everything. Uh, you can read the manual or just go online. Here's your HVAC controls for the middle and vents. Um, here's the armrest, which folds down, and you've got this tablet. This has an option for a tablet, so you can eject it. And I think it's just a Samsung tablet. Yeah, it's just a Samsung Galaxy tablet. We can do all kinds of different things to it. Power it up and do your comfort and settings and utilize some of those controls uh, that are out front there for you for the back seats. And then to put it there, it just goes in and then you can power it down, I guess. It just sucks it in. Now, I don't know what this button does. That pops open a phone charger. So you can drop that in, it has the uh, key charging there. And then we were monkeying around looking for the um, cup holders and they are here and that's how they come out it takes a little force this one's sticking a bit but it's kind of cool drinks go in here and they get hold by their levers and it fits everything fits pretty nice so for this upgraded interior you get all these nice little outfits here um what else can i show you uh, again you've got nice seats very comfortable lots of seatings these have the, the pillow cushions uh, and all that kind of stuff it's just a really nice uh luxurious environment to be in now for cargo space, I can show you the rear hatch and sorry for any background noise. It's really busy here today. Got lots of planes and people running around, but that's okay. I enjoy that. A couple ways to open the hatch. This is a hatchback, which is nice because it gives you much more interior space than a sedan with a trunk would. A couple of ways you can open it. You can use your remote. There's a button inside or just manually do it just by flipping the switch. And as you can see, it's a power trunk and it opens up power hatch. Lots of boot space in here. It has 610 liters or 25.4 cubic feet with the back seats up. There's 60 40 splits. If you throw them down, you'll get 1,770 liters and 62.5 cubic feet of storage, which is quite a lot. In fact, I had three large suitcases in my Model 3 that I had to take to the airport for somebody. And I had to put two of them in the trunk and one in the back seat to get in the car. I was able to get all three of them in this vehicle. So it's very deceiving. It's got a pretty large boot and great for hauling stuff around. Now sticking with cargo, there is no frunk option or front truck um, front truck option, excuse me, on the EQS at all. In fact, Mercedes doesn't even allow you to open up the, the front hood. There is no lever or button to open this up. The only way you can open it and get it opened is by taking it to Mercedes service if you need to have something done like potentially cabin air filters or something like that. Well, you know, we'll have to see. But again, basically, there's really not much to do on these EVs from a maintenance perspective. But you're asking, well, how do you put the windshield washer fluid in? Well, you remember BMW had this cool little tray that popped out in the front. Well, Mercedes doesn't do that. They have this tray on the side. So just push on that tray. If I can figure out which way to open it, there we go. It opens up and you have this little container that you can pour your windshield washer fluid in and which will fill up. And then you just slide it back and it closes. Pretty cool little feature and you know i guess i can understand on these really higher end luxury cars there's really no need to be poking around in the front now for advanced driver assistant systems or adas this has a full complement suite of course being a high-end luxury sedan it comes packed with standard uh, technology including adaptive cruise control and self-parking assists um, for more information on their crash results, you can go visit the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, or the IIHS websites to see that. Very, very uh, uh, safe vehicles. As you folks know, inherently in that skateboard platform, there's a lot of safety elements that um, are provided by that, again, just as there are driving benefits. So I encourage you to learn more about that. But you do get, of course, standard automated emergency braking with pedestrian detection. You get standard lane departure warning and lane keeping assist, standard blind spot monitoring, and so on and so forth. Now, I have uh, played with the uh, lane keeping and the adaptive cruise, so I'll show, that, show you that coming up in my driving impression summary. Um, and I can tell you that some of the warnings work because I've had them come on a little bit when people are running across and it's detecting somebody or somebody uh, uh, slowing down a little quicker in front of me than I might have caught and giving me that warning. So the systems do work very well. Lots of different controls that you could turn things on or off. I always recommend leaving these systems on and letting them help you drive more safely. Now, speaking of driving, let me take you for a quick drive and uh, share with you my thoughts. All right, so giving my driving uh, thoughts here in this wonderful 2022 
Mercedes-Benz uh, EQS 580 4Matic. Finally getting that straight. Um, all I can say is uh, I've been driving this for about three days now. Um, so I haven't really taken it on any long trips yet, just mainly inner city and had to go to the airport and that kind of stuff. Um, but this has just been a phenomenal car uh, to drive. Um, as I've been saying throughout this video, it, this is a luxury sedan. So it's going to drive like a luxury sedan. It's going to handle very well. It's going to stay on the road. It's going to have well-behaved uh, manners when it comes to bumps and turning and things like that. I mean, the turning on this is really good. Um, I took a friend of mine out and he, comp he complimented the vehicle for how well it turned being the large size. So, you know, that rear steering rear really makes a difference um, on this, on the handling and the, and the capabilities of this vehicle and turning. So it's really good. And that, that's great when you're going to malls or trying to park this vehicle too. Now it is a little wider, so you have to be cognizant of that. But, um, you know, it does still make it relatively nimble and easy to drive around. All right, so as I go off my favorite road here um, in uh, the neck of the woods where I live, um, you know, again, there, there's it's a very, very quiet cabin. You know, I commented about the Lyric being super quiet. Well, this is right at par with that. Um, again, I don't have, not really measuring sound because I find those phone apps to be not that accurate when it comes to measuring decibels and such so i kind of don't do that i'm just going by my ear but this is very quiet i don't have to raise my voice we went for a trip uh, a drive my wife and i and we could just talk normal all that kind of stuff so you know there's nothing we really had to had to overcome any sound and and as you would expect from a vehicle of this class and price point it should be really quiet it should be very smooth um, and it should provide a really nice quality luxury drive which it absolutely does now i have it set on the comfort mode uh, as i said i've been driving around in that pretty well the whole time seems to be the nicest mode to do that um, i'm in normal recoup and i can switch it here to strong and now it will uh, you know now i can go into the one pedal driving mode that's basically what that means is when it's strong like that um, so it which works really well just as anything again once you figure it out you learn how to feather the accelerator and you can stop where you want to once in a while you might have to use the brake not that not that big of a deal um what else let me driving position i was able obviously with the multi-function power seats they, they they adjust so many different ways uh it's almost impossible not to find a comfortable driving position the steering wheel is powered both to, uh, tilt up and down and telescopic so you can definitely find something here um, I found, uh, you know, it's a very pleasant, I, I like to sit a little higher, so, you know, if you may see me get in in this, I kind of have to duck, that's because I like to have the seat high, and because this is such a sharp raking hood, I, I kind of really want to see over the steering wheel and over the driver binnacle hump here, um, I like to have that view, I don't want to be sunk down where this thing is higher, so I'm a little higher than probably most people may sit, but that's just my personal preference, just the way I like it here. Um, oh, it looks like they're finally finishing some construction on this. Been going on for a while. Um, so now I get into some open country road here. Again, this is a fairly smooth road, but you know, in my Tesla Model 3, I feel these bumps a little bit more, certainly than in this vehicle. Um, this just handles it very, very nicely. Um, it is a bit of a floating feeling. Uh, you may have heard some people in the reviews talk about that. Again, because I haven't set it comfort mode, I'm gonna leave it at that. I like that feel, that's what I'm looking for. But it's not floating to the point where you feel yourself getting out of control. It's not floating where you know you're looking for contact for the wheels to make when you need to turn. Uh, move the wheel very slightly, and the, the vehicle moves. You can change the steering dynamics as well, make it a little bit more sporty. Uh, I've got it again on comfort, so you would be like a full power assist mode, um, all that kind of stuff. So it you know it works really well in in doing that and providing um, providing the steering input. Um, that you need now i do find the brakes as usual with a lot of electric cars they do feel a little mushy they stop fine there's no doubt about that but again that brake feels going to be different than in a lot of internal combustions because of the way that they're built and with the regenerative braking that occurs as well so you know i have no problem in stopping if i slam on the brakes here everything goes flying but um, so I have no problem there. Uh, I didn't slam it on enough to anti-lock it. Uh, I just slowed down enough, but it's no problem in getting out of a situation. And then from a speed element here, again, I'm gonna, I have to watch my speed on these roads. I don't wanna get too crazy, but um, you know, if I slow down here, uh, go a little slower and then speed up. Uh, and again, I'm in comfort mode, so I'm not in sport mode with the, with the uh, huge acceleration. But you know, if I get on this 100% power, uh, things 
things are flying from the dash and stuff. So you hear that noise, it goes when it wants to. Um, and that's in comfort mode. That's not even with full sport mode, which will give you a little bit higher power output to the motors. So as I mentioned, this is a fast zero to 60 time for a heavy long vehicle like this is. It's very, it's very surprising. That's the word I guess I was trying to look for that this vehicle has that capability where you wouldn't think in just a kind of a long, you know, luxurious um, driving vehicle to drive people and stuff around um, and to move things it, that it has some sort of performance characteristics. So again, I wouldn't track this vehicle. You could, but I wouldn't. Why? That's not what it's built for. Um, it's got that air suspension, which uh, you'll hear sometimes that it does some automatic adjusting and things like that um, as it goes about its business. Sometimes you'll load it up with people and you'll hear the uh, compressor go and, and do some adjustments. And then when you get out and all your unloads and it'll level itself. So it does that all automatically. And I believe as you put the, um, the different drive modes, when it changes the suspension setups, it will utilize that air and some of the dampening as well to, uh, to give you that uh, difference in ride. Now, as I mentioned, I haven't been able to notice a, a definitive difference in ride quality. Um, can almost do a full circle in here. This is a little tight turning spot, so I'm not surprised that I can't. Don't want to end up in the ditch, so I'll play a little safe. But uh, a really good turning circle, as you saw, um, or as you will see coming up as well, that I described. So just a very capable vehicle, very pleasant to drive. I think it has a good mix of touchscreen controls and buttons. Now, as I said, I would like these to be buttons uh, instead of these full plastic pieces. Um, I'm not, uh, even this, I'd rather have buttons because I keep brushing on it with my arm here or the coffee or something. But I wanted to give you my overall impressions. This is just a fantastic vehicle to drive. It's very effortless. It's very luxurious. It's quiet. It's comfortable. Um, it's serene, as I said earlier. It's just a really nice car to drive. More than enough capabilities, and I'm still blown away, blown away by that range um, uh, capabilities. You know, even to get 450 to 500 kilometers on this, uh, I would have, I'd be really happy with that. So if it gets anything more, that'll be great. I don't even think I'm going to empty this thing in my driving because I'm just not driving that much this week, uh, going back and forth to work and doing some errands around home. So uh, lots of capabilities here. Just a beautiful car to drive, and um, that's my thoughts. I uh, hope you like that. Now I'll get you back to the rest of the video. All right, so just quickly show you the uh, adaptive uh, cruise control and the lane keeping in the Mercedes uh, EQS 580. So as you can see, I have it engaged. Um, it's asking me to grab the wheel, so I did. Now it's asking me to grab it again. Um, so I have it set for a speed. I have it set for a distance from the car ahead of me. And uh, I'm not touching the wheel, only when it asks me to. And as you can see, it's holding the road. Um, it, the car has slowed down a little aggressively there, which is typical for a lot of the ECCs. Slows down a little bit heavy, Tesla does that too. Uh, so now I've let go of the wheel and I'll let it get up to speed here. And you'll see how it navigates uh, these lanes, which aren't the best on this part of the country road that I'm on, but they're seeable. It's asking me to grab the wheel again. Uh, usually every 10 to 20 seconds, it kind of does something like that. I think it depends on, on lane visibility as well. But as you can see, we went left and we went right again, and it did it all on its own. I'm not touching a thing here. I'm just ready to grab the wheel. So what, now it's asking me to grab the wheel. So I do a little torque sensor nudge, and it gets back into position, and it does its thing. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a good vision-based system. Seems to be handling the road quite well, even on these lane markings that aren't as good. I'm going to just lower the speed here since we're hitting a... Uh, uh, a 60 zone with some construction. I probably won't let it go through the construction um, on its own. I like to take control, but as you can see, it handled the uh, lane keeping very well. So good job, Mercedes.
So to start going into the wrap up, hope you enjoyed those the driving impressions as well. And uh, we try to do add on the sounds and that kind of stuff. It's a pretty cool sounding vehicle, I mean, I'll tell you that. Um, but it does cost you. The base MSRP Canadian is $146,500. And this particular model as tested was just over $162,000. A lot of money for a high-end luxury sedan. But hey folks, look at a Tesla Model S, look at a Lucid Air, look at other products that are out there, and they're all pushing, you know, 120, 130, 140, and 50 plus Canadian thousand dollar pricing. So it's not not too far to ask for Mercedes to play in that club. And again, this is a electrified version of their S-Class, which is their top vehicle. So it's going to cost you some money. Regardless of the price point, for what you get if you're into that price point, it offers fantastic value in my opinion. Um, it's, it's an excellent drive. It's very comfortable. It's very quiet, as you, you've heard me say. Um, the suspension uh, just really, yes, it floats a little bit, and I'm not worried about that because it still handles the road. You never feel that you're out of control in driving. You might not get that feel that you would with a Porsche or something else but it does not detract from any handling or safety or any driving. And remember folks, daily driving, city driving, highway driving, that's what cars are built for. They're not built, uh, production cars like this aren't built to be taken on the track and driven all the time like you're driving on the track. And you want a ride that's going to keep you safe and comfortable. And this certainly does that in spades. So final summary, first of all, do I recommend this? Hey, absolutely do I recommend this. This is a beautiful, fantastic, awesome vehicle. There's a whole bunch of other nice adjectives that I can throw in there as well to complement this vehicle. It truly is stunning. It performs admirably. It's got great range. It's super quiet, super comfortable, very luxurious. You know, probably even the base version is going to be very nice. Never mind this. Everybody who wrote on this was saying, my goodness, this is like first class in an airliner. This is very comfortable, very nice. And that's what you get for a large luxury sedan like the EQS uh, series. That's what they're built for, right? Not necessarily driving around the track. They're built for comfort, safety, moving people and things around in a very nice manner. I just can't get over the range on this as well. Again, here's my final range numbers. And as you can see, that's outstanding. I mean, I was so surprised when I charged this up to 100 the first night to get 670 uh, kilometers showing range. Unbelievable. Now this car already has a couple thousand kilometers on it, so it's not brand new, which means in my opinion, the battery has had some time to balance out. So I think that that's a, that's a pretty accurate and a really good estimation. I think the EPA numbers are still short and that typically they tend to be short when they, uh, they come out with those. Now obviously in winter and cooler temperatures, it's gonna be different, but if you look at the Mercedes website, they, they show you some numbers and some of those are based at minus 10 uh, C uh, centigrade uh, winter testing numbers and they're still really good ranges. So the, the thermal management system in here and the, and the battery technologies, the BMS works wonderfully to keep these batteries very healthy and at good temperatures to extend your range. So. Obviously, this is a fantastic vehicle for not only city commuting, you'd have to charge this up, gee, maybe once a week, maybe even a little bit more. <laughs> you can go a little longer than that, depending on your driving. If you're doing longer inner city trips, this is a perfect vehicle. If you're doing longer road trips, this is a great vehicle for that. You just have to make sure you can find some of those uh, higher end, ultra speed, um, uh, DC fast chargers. You can charge this off a of 50 kilowatt if you want. There's no saying you can't, but it's just gonna take some time. So you would need to do a bit more planning. But the good thing on that is that everybody is getting on board. Mercedes has partnered with thousands of, of charging station providers across North America to use their account. I have this little RFID card that I can go to charge point or flow or a bunch of others and just plug in. And I don't really have to do much to it. So they're working on these relationships as well as some of the other OEMs to make it easier for you to travel long distances. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching on YouTube. If you have, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. That would be great. And of course, if you're interested in helping me on Patreon, you can look at the link below. Check out what that's all about for my current Patreon supporters. I'm always very humbled. You guys and gals know who you are. Again, I want to thank Mercedes Canada for allowing me the use of this press vehicle. It's been a fantastic few days to spend driving in ultra luxury um, vehicles and just feeling like I'm at king of the world almost, right? As, <laughs> as uh, James Cameron would say, you, this kind of car makes you feel that way. So I want to thank them for that and everybody continue to watch 
the EV landscape. And again, I am going down to Fully Charged Life San Diego. So I hope to see many of you down there if you're going. If you're thinking of going and want to buy tickets, you could use my coupon code. I'll put that here and it's also in the show notes. So go check that out and you can register. I look, it'll be a couple days of fun stuff uh, down in the Fully Charged and San Diego is a lovely city. I'll be down hosting a couple panels. I'll probably have a booth area as well. So come and find me, say hi. Always love to hear your stories on why you made the, the steps into EV adoption. And if you have it, I can help and answer a lot of questions. So until then, everybody continue. Please to stay safe. Have a great summer. And I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.